If you are not giving up on this team and on this season after a brutal loss and a heartbreaker against the Chargers, then like today's video. Honestly, I would love for this to be the most liked video in channel history to show that Falcons fans are not punting on this year after just one loss. And hey, once you do so, type me in the comment section below so we can see where all the real Falcons fans are by dropping a me in the comment section. Welcome into Falcons Today by Chat Sports. Matthew Peterson here with you guys after the Falcons 20 to 17 loss against the Chargers in what was the most Falcons and Chargers ending ever. I mean, these two teams love to invent creative and new ways to lose games at the end. So putting them together, sure enough, would live up to the expectations. We'll go through the ending at this game later on, but let's check out the updated NFC South standings after the Falcons' loss and a late heroic comeback win for the Bucks, which has Tampa Bay sitting at the top of the division with the tiebreaker over Atlanta at 4-5. and five. But the Falcons are still very much in this race. So, do you think the Falcons can still win the NFC South? Yes or no? You know, fortunately, like yesterday was nearly perfect for Atlanta. You're about to beat the Chargers, start really adding some win on, wins on, and the Bucks were this close to losing to the Rams at home and really letting the season slip away here. Now, here are my Week 9 takeaways for you guys. The Falcons, I'll start on a positive note, have a very strong 1-2 punch between Tyler Algier and Cordero Patterson. The Falcons love to run the football, Mostly, I think, because of what Arthur Smith has to work with on this roster. So he is bending and he is adapting to his team's strengths, which is Algier and Cordero Patterson hitting the ground game hard. All right, The Falcons' one-two punch yesterday against the Chargers was awesome, combining for a total of 201 yards. The Falcons' ground game against the Chargers was awesome. They averaged 5.7 yards per carry. I know that this team's DNA for a long time was pass, pass, pass with Matt Ryan, Julio Jones, Calvin Ridley, Roddy White, Tony Gonzalez, et cetera, et cetera. But credit to this Falcons coaching staff leaning in and adapting to this team's strengths, which is running the football. And it might take them all the way to the top of the NFC South. All right, first, uh, first things first up. We have a brand new sponsor I'm really excited to share with you guys today. And today's episode of Falcons Today is sponsored by Established Titles. Established Titles is a fun and novel way to help preserve the natural woodlands of Scotland, okay? Uh, while also helping with global reforestation efforts. It is a project based on a historic Scottish custom where landowners are referred to as layers or lords and ladies in English. Title packs give you at least one square foot of dedicated land with a unique plot number on a private estate in Edelston, Scotland, and an official certificate with a crest. We plant a tree with every order and work with global charities, One Tree Planted, and Trees for the Future to support global reforestation efforts. You can officially include the title Lord or Lady on your credit card, plane tickets, dating profiles, etc. It makes a great last-minute gift. The first 200 people purchasing a title pack using my link will effectively be next to my plot with a, within a few minutes of walking distance. Depending on how many of you want to become a lord or lady, we can build our own Falcon's Kingdom. It makes an amazing last minute gift. Established Titles is actually running a massive early Black Friday sale right now with discounts up to 80% plus off. Plus, if you use the code CHAT, uh, uh, you get an additional 10% off. Go to EstablishedTitles.com slash chat to get your gifts now and help support the channel. That link is in the comments and the description of today's show. So my second week nine takeaway. Take one, Graham. Come on, man. The Falcons had this, right? They were about to have the football with less than two minutes and have a great turnover, a great takeaway, and take one, Graham. Hold on to the football, man. The Falcons had it. 
Graham, if you didn't see it, recovered an Austin Eckler touch, uh, Austin Eckler fumble with less than two minutes to go. The Falcons were going to have the football near the 50. A reliable kicker in Young Way Koo get 20 or so more yards, get in field goal range, and win this game. Instead, he fumbles without any sort of contact. It was as if he was allergic to pigskin and remembered it midway through his return in an all-time blunder of a drop. You know Booger and the rest of the ESPN crew is going to be pointing this out during Monday Night Football tonight. The Falcons and the Chargers love to have just new and inventive and creative ways to lose games. And unfortunately, Aquan Graham, come on, man. All right, we don't need to beat a dead horse on that subject, though. We're all thinking it here. But what I am thinking about is if this Falcons channel can get to 8,400 subscribers, which we're only 64 away from doing so, well, we're going to get way more Falcons content out for you guys. So if you are a member of the Dirty Birds and you love the Falcons and want free Falcons YouTube content, well, click on that subscribe button today. All right, third week nine takeaway. There needs to be... Be, the Falcons need to be better through the air, right? If the Falcons are serious about making a legitimate postseason run, well, it's got to have a better quarterback play. And I'm not taking anything away from Mariota because he has not been asked to do a whole lot through the air. They like what they can do on the ground, and it works. So I'm not saying that the Falcons need to revitalize and completely redo their approach to games. But you have some good talent and some big playmakers in Drake London and Kyle Pitts who need to be utilized more, right? That I'm not bringing anything new to the table. And it's not that the Falcons' approach to their offensive philosophy hasn't work in, has not worked so far, but if you want to hang with the big QBs of the NFL and be a legitimate playoff team, you got to find better success through the air. And I feel very repetitive saying this, and major broken drum vibes here, but this team needs a serious aerial attack if they want to win meaningful games, right? You can win games on the ground beating up teams like the Panthers or a bad Browns run defense, but if you want to hang with the big boys of the NFC and the AFC, they got to get somewhat better through the year. I'm not asking for this team to become a Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes-led aerial attack overnight. But there has to be some more co um, consistent consistency in their air raid. All right, be the GM for me. Be Fontenot. Should the Falcons draft a quarterback in the 2023 NFL draft? I asked this question because producer Nick Roloff and I were talking before this. And it feels like NFL fans, their leash for quarterbacks is at an all-time short, right? It's never been shorter where if you can't get it done in one to two seasons, like look at Malik Willis last night for the uh, for the Titans. How many Titans fans out there are going, well, there's no future with him. We better start over. And so I'm wondering if the Falcons haven't seen enough from Desmond Ritter in practice to give him any shot during the games because it's not like he's unable to hand the football off the same rate that Mariota does. Makes you wonder if maybe you go back to the draft and try and restart at QB. All right. Fourth takeaway from week nine. This defense has showed some things. This was a defense that coming into the season, all I wanted to see from them was that A.J. Terrell would be a top five corner and Grady Jarrett would be one of the best interior defensive linemen and growth from Michael Walker and Arnold Ebiketti. Those are the big things I wanted to see this year. We've gotten a lot more than that. In fact, we haven't even gotten a whole lot from A.J. Terrell, honestly. But Justin Herbert against the Falcons, 30 for 43, 245 yards, one touchdown, and one interception. Now, granted, he did not have Mike Williams or Keenan Allen. And Josh Palmer had a pretty good day against this Falcons secondary. Eight grabs, 106 yards. But this was a Falcons secondary without Hayward and Terrell. They're top two guys. So in a way, they kind of cancel out. And this Falcons defense, put in perspective, Justin Herbert threw the ball 43 times. And only got 245 yards out of 43 pass attempts. That's a win in my book. Justin Herbert comes out here, 40-plus pass attempts, and can't even cross 250 yards against a Falcons secondary without their two starting cornerbacks? I'll take that any day of the week here. But what was your biggest takeaway from this game? I want to hear from everyone in the comments section. I know there are a lot of you out there who are 
beating a different kind of drum about the hosts here on Falcons today. And I love to see your comments get on screen. So use this as an opportunity to be your own host, right? To get on screen and let your voice be heard by giving me your biggest takeaways from this game. And the best ones we'll throw on screen for the next edition of Falcons today.